All right, this is my speech. My dad is here, my mom is here, and my aunt is on uh, FaceTime on the phone. Just make sure I'm set up. Cool. All right, guys, when you think about essential jobs, what kind of jobs do you think about? Teacher. Teachers, doctors. Uh, firefighters. Firefighters, yeah. Like police. Police. There's a ton. And I think of sanitation workers, the doctors, I think of the teachers. And so these essential jobs are ones that without them, we would be negatively affected. Farmers. Farmers, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> um, for example, no sanitation workers. We'd have piles of trash outside our homes. With no teachers, no educators, we'd have to educate ourselves. But what about the essential jobs that no one really thinks about, right? The less popular ones. Mortician comes from the Latin word mort, meaning death. Morticians have a valuable role in the aftercare of a deceased person. Some of their roles include preparing the deceased person for a funeral by dressing them or putting makeup on them, applying, um, helping families with the needs of funeral costs and funeral arrangements. And also it goes above and beyond that. And it goes with connecting families to the resources needed, like counselors, for uh, dealing with life after death of a loved one. My visual aid is uh, six mortician duties. These are including but not limited to, um, and I will, exactly what I said, and I will uh, let you guys take a look at that if you would like. There are two primary ways to becoming a mortician. Option one is a more unofficial training and education pathway. And this requires you earning your high school diploma or GED. From there, you'll find a funeral home that's offering training. Most funeral homes, however, will require that you have experience. I can take that for you. Will require that you have experience, but some are willing to train you. And here you can expect to find an open position and do the duties and tasks involved in that, but under the direct watch and uh, guidance of a licensed funeral home director. The more official way of becoming a mortician is you get your GED or your high school diploma and then you enroll in a training program through an accredited program. Uh, most states must, most morticians must hold their associate's degree, but you can also get your bachelor's degree in, mor in mortuary science and associates will take about two years and bachelors will take about four years. According to morticianschool.net, there are about 47 mortuary science schools that offer an associates and about, um, or that offer a program and about um, a sixth of them will offer your bachelor's degree in mortuary science. While states vary with their requirements to becoming a mortician, most will require you complete an internship or apprenticeship for at least a year, but more commonly it's about two or three years before becoming a mortician. Additionally, you must pass relevant licensing exams Depending on your state, you may have to pass some or all of the following exams. So one is the national board exam, two is the state board exam, and three is your state's law, rules, and regulations exam. And this will be specific to your state. Most programs that are offering more tree science will also have you learn tons of aspects about the science and the business aspect of being a mortician. So the science aspect, you can expect to learn about chemistry, anatomy, embalming. You'll learn the business aspect of it, including accounting, funeral directing. You'll also learn social sciences, including biology and sociology. And then you can also expect to learn uh, the ethics side of it. So this can include business law and funeral service law and ethics. The salary range is quite big, so on average you'll get around 53,000 a year, you can expect to make that. On the low end you'll make about 30,000 a year, and on the high end about 84,000 a year. But this really varies with your roles and duties, so we looked at the mortician duty um, visual aid. If I'm doing only two of these, I can expect to maybe make less. But if I'm very high up in, in my duties and roles as a mortician, right, maybe I'm doing all six of them, even more. Um, I can expect to make uh, even more than about 84000 a year, so it really varies. And the mortician license, it'll expire every one to two years, depending on your state, so you must regularly participate in state-approved continuing education. This can include uh, types of trainings like customer service revolution, 
seminars regarding embalming, and connecting with the LGBTQ plus community. This has also helped people in the mortician uh, career are able to stay up to date with the ever-changing world around them. By having to take these specific classes and being refreshed every few years in the roles and introduced to new concepts and ways to op operate, uh, these workers will stay engaged, relative, and just up to date with the needs of clients. Being a mortician may not be the most talked about career path, but it's a vital one. When someone passes away, families are often left in distress about how, how, to, how to deal with this death now, how to deal with this person that's passed away. Unfortunately, many families aren't prepared for this because they didn't prepare for the death. You can take, unfortunately, it's, it's sad, but um, the, the passing of a loved one in a car accident. Right? Morticians are here to guide families in many aspects of planning for the funeral, connecting them with services to help them cope with the death, and so much more. Although the career path does take a few years, most programs encourage and actually require you to get an internship in. And so this will allow you as a student to, once you finish your degree, be entering the world of this career path quite quickly. Thank you.